So, you've started a new business with a product that you want to sell online, perhaps through Amazon.com? Like many startups, you operate bootstrapped, especially when it comes to marketing. And you're also probably not a professional marketer either, or you just don't understand at professional level, like the ins and the outs of marketing versus advertising and versus public relations. You're probably also not an expert at content marketing or even have in-depth skills and equipment needed to make visual content. This is critical because visual content has for a long time been the king of marketing aspects. And in particular, it's really important to you as a startup. Visual content often is an area where startups go wrong. It can doom you from the start. For example, if you're selling a product online, you're going to need some pictures of the product, right? And today, it's ever so tempting to take the product photos yourself. After all, you could use your smartphone or maybe a basic DSLR. People do good product photos, like with their smartphones. They do them all the time, right? Well, don't do that. Also acknowledge the fact that unless you are a professional photographer and a marketer, these services cost money. You can't get them for free. And if you do, well, you should probably expect a related value in the quality of the service. In other words, like with most products, the price that you pay is directly related to the quality that you're gonna get. So, accept that you will need to have some money to pay for the things like a good quality product photography. Maybe it could be the cost of a fancy date or even two. But before we get started, let's just go over some reasons why visual content is so critical. So, if images are necessary, how important is it that the images be of good quality? According to research by MDG Advertising, 67% of buyers surveyed said a high quality product photo is very important when selecting a product to buy. It ranked number one, even more important than user reviews. That's right, that's important. Okay, so, now we know that visual content is a must and that high quality product photos are critical. But you just don't have the budget for expensive photographers and now you know that a smartphone, it, the photo just will not cut it. So let's get into how you might approach visual content on a budget. Let's look at a couple of examples for a moment. The white background keeps the focus on the product and if you're selling on Amazon, it's a requirement. This background also helps keep costs minimal because you just don't need locations or props and such. There should be one hero shot of the full product and perhaps a close up of a key feature or two. Next, get going on the content to go with it. As was shown, consider doing a graphic overlay to call out key features. For the long description, be sure of good spelling and proper grammar. If you're not a good writer, you might want to get one. That's stage one. Simple, great, clear, and telling product photos to go along well-written details about the product. Get those images uploaded online to start selling. You'll need that revenue to reinvest in upping your sales game. Let's get into details about the next stage. 
There are other things to do, such as SEO and other promos to get the word out about your products. Remember, great products, great photos, great descriptions, and great promos equal great sales and reviews. If any of these elements are missing, you're basically hindering potential. Once you've succeeded here, it's time to reinvest some of that revenue into more branded photography, lifestyle photography, Lifestyle photography is where you exalt your branding. Amazon recognizes its benefits and offers an enhanced brand content service to support this level of imaging. These photos will likely cost you more than a basic product photography, maybe even as much as two or three fancy dates. But they lay the foundation for the opportunity to establish a stronger perception for your product in your customer's mind. Let's use an analogy to explain. If you're familiar with buying a new car, one step is to do a test drive. The salesperson does it so you can feel and see yourself driving that car. And it's the same thing when buying a house, perhaps like this one. Open houses are done in part so you can start visualizing how you can live in that house. Few things make an agent happier than hearing open house visitors talk about how they put the TV over there. These processes are designed to build a personal experience between you and their product. Online and in print, this is done with lifestyle photography. Lifestyle photography might require a location, props and models to show potential customers how that product can be part of their everyday lives or how it suits a particular activity that a customer might do. In many cases, this will mean showcasing your product in multiple locations with various props and probably with various models. The lifestyle photography you have done for you should be multi-purpose and you may want to do several different shoots for this reason. For example, you will want some images to post alongside the product. Photography you previously have done. Other images might go on your website and at this stage don't forget to start pushing social media channels too. Lifestyle images on social media can help you establish the positioning you want for your brand. You also want to do this because out of sight means out of mind. Stay active with your posts. At this point, your competition will likely start paying more attention to you. So, it's important to remember that if you don't brand yourself, your competition likely will do it for you. In other words, it's important to really be sure your competition doesn't beat you to the punch. You need to be sure they don't use far better quality visual content for their brand than you. If they do, it creates an opportunity to let them position you as lower quality. Or worse, your own potential customers might do it when comparing you with them. This is why the most successful brands in the world only use the highest quality imagery in their marketing. The images you use are a direct reflection of the quality of your product. Don't forget that. Moving on to the next stage, adding video. Video is highly alike and complementary to what lifestyle photos do. However, video can also be used for customer testimonials, product instructions or demonstrations and so on. 
Lifestyle photos with video of your product in action can be a convincing combination or a clear competitive differentiator. Yes, it too will cost you, but by this point, you should be reinvesting a portion of your revenue to an ongoing visual content budget. Each of these stages increases in cost because you're going up the elevator to more sales and competition but they don't have to consume large parts of your revenue. Just remember that they do have an impact on how much revenue you'll generate. Not doing it is often more expensive as you see your competition steal sales. Finally, the last stage. Once you've reached the point where you can consider an ongoing marketing budget for advertising and PR, congratulations. You've come a long way from skipping a fancy date to pay for your product photography. In advertising and PR, visual content continues to play official roles. This is the final stage of your startup's visual content life cycle. Actually, it's only the beginning. Rinse and repeat for the most part, using effective visual content with each new product launch is a never ending requirement in today's world where visual content is king. If you want to read the more detailed article behind this video, published in Home Business Magazine, head to the link in the video description. Thanks for watching best of luck to all you entrepreneurs out there.